female-led relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello and welcome to the official Love and Obey female-led relationship podcast. I'm Marissa Rudder, author of 14 books that have become the world's best-selling female-led relationship book series. And I want to welcome you to the Love and Obey movement. My female-led relationship podcast has been created for mature audiences only. This podcast is specifically designed to be listened to by adults and therefore may be unsuitable for children under 18. This program may contain one or more of the following, crude and indecent language, as well as descriptions and discussions about explicit sexual activity. This female-led relationship podcast is created and authored by me, Marissa Rudder. It is published and provided for informational and entertainment purposes only. The information in this podcast constitute my own opinions and or any guests who may appear from time to time, and it should not be regarded as a description of medical, psychiatric, or relationship counseling services. One of the most important parts of female-led relationship is understanding what it means to be a submissive man. The dominance and submission theme is prevalent in female-led life where the queen is a dominant and takes a leadership role in the household while the man is submissive. Now, more powerful modern queens seek submissive men because they're more supportive and there is less power struggle. So female-led relationships and female-led marriages tend to last. So what does it mean to be submissive? There is a beautiful surrender that comes when a man allows himself to be vulnerable and submissive to his queen. When men experience negative life occurrences, it can harden them and cause them to go inward and bottle up frustrations inside of them. However, submission can help them to relax their rigid boundaries because their queen essentially takes control. They have someone they can trust to take the lead, which takes the pressure off them. A man's true nature is to submit to a dominant woman, and he desires to find someone so powerful that he has no choice but to make it his life purpose to serve her. It is only through this service that men can fully become aware of their true nature and learn more about their inner desires. The reason men begin to explore domination submission early through porn is they have this inner motivation but don't quite understand why. They often begin their exploration as teenagers, then continue into adulthood. Today, hundreds of thousands of men are embracing a female-led lifestyle. Why? Because they find joy in being submissive men to a strong woman. The assumption is that submissive men give up all responsibility for themselves. This is a misconception that they become doormats or cannot stand up for themselves and are taken advantage of by a predatory dominant queen. This is absolutely false. Submissive men are extremely strong and capable. They are men who simply want to submit to the most important women in their lives. Many of them crave submission to temporarily escape the huge responsibilities that they take on in their normal lives. This is why more couples are exploring this dynamic of domination and submission. So there is an innate desire in many men to be dominated by a woman. I believe that they are born with this desire. And I also believe that this desire is enhanced through his childhood experiences with his female authority figures. Now, he's carried in the womb of a woman, birthed into this world by a woman, and nurtured at the breasts of a woman, pleasured by the loving hands of a woman, and loved and comforted by a woman. There's a special bond between a young boy and his mother. Freud suggested that part of this is sexual in his famous Oedipus complex. Most of the time, a young boy is bathed, caressed, nurtured, and spanked by an adult. With divorce rate of 50%, many households are ruled by single women, and hence the man's first experience with female authority. I believe that this experience does not fade. It only strengthens as men mature. When boys reach adolescence, many begin to experiment with their sexuality. As they're curious and they're drawn to the female, her beauty and her mysterious ways. Sometimes when we examine young relationships between teenage boys and girls, we can see in some cases a real desire for the female to lead. Females tend to develop faster than men, so even in teenage years, the more mature girls tend to exert some authority over men, and this forms a foundation for their later relationships. Now, in general, if men indulge in submission, especially during sex, they become accustomed to being dominated by the female. The submission to female authority also extends to teacher-student relationships and then into the workplace, where men are now managed and directed by more females in leadership positions. 
We see this depicted in TV shows like The Suits, Good Wife, CSI, where women occupy many of the management positions and men being their subordinate. A real movement in society is happening when media increases the portrayal of female leaders and many movies depict stories of female-led relationships. So more and more males are being conditioned to accept this authority and they crave it in their relationships. Now walk down many upscale and yuppie neighborhoods and you will see the fathers called Mr. Mom. These are the men who opt to stay at home and raise the kids while their wives have demanding careers. There are more and more services and benefits for men who choose these roles, including paternity leave, change tables, and men's washrooms. 20 years ago, this was unheard of, even frowned upon. Today, these have become perfectly acceptable roles for men. Now, men tend to be affected by the most important female authority figure in his life, his mother. Mothers in society do everything. They solve problems. They take care of things, make purchases, make decisions. A man's mother becomes one of the most important influences in his life. And over the years, the role of the female as head of authority figure has become almost infinite. So with 50% of marriages end in divorce, it means at least 50% of the men will be influenced and probably need a strong female authority for life. Since these desires don't seem to diminish, it means the desire for a partner or spouse to be that female authority figure for a man becomes more crucial. Men may not express it. You may not even be aware of how much family circumstances affected your man. But what is certain is that if there is a strong possibility he was raised in a single parent household, craving a female power figure is normal. One theory is that as men mature, and his sexual desires become intertwined with his life, his life experience becomes more strongly related to his sexual fantasies. If he's used to strong female figures taking care of him, then he begins to enter puberty. His sexual fantasies often involve being the helpless sexual victim to one of his adult female authority figures, like an older woman, a teacher, or babysitter. Not all boys start out their sexual exploration with these types of fantasies, but many boys do. When these boys grow up to be men with submissive desires, they often still maintain the fantasy of being an innocent and helpless boy that is being dominated or sexually used by an adult female authority figure. They recall that their first submissive desires were towards an older female, friend of the family, a teacher, or babysitter. They remember how pleasurable and exciting it was to have these desires. Young boys also want to please their mother, make them proud of their accomplishments at school or in sports. Usually as they happen upon adult magazines or videos, the stories and scenes where an older woman dominates a younger male is what causes them the most intense sexual arousal. It's important to understand how your man responds to female authority and what could have been the influences in his life. Don't try to force these explanations from him because men can be very guarded about these deep personal early experiences. Men are motivated to please women. They know instinctively that women are the, of utmost importance to their happiness and survival as a species. They have an innate understanding that they can get almost any need satisfied if they rely on a female as a result. A man would do just about anything to get the attention and eventual affection of a woman he desires. This inherent desire to satisfy and to please is built so deep in a man's makeup that his brain is physically designed to fulfill this. I cover a great deal specifically about submissive men and submission in my book, Submissive. Now, in a female-led relationship, the queen is the dominant and she's a leader of the household. She calls the shots. She guides and leads you in all aspects of life and the relationship. As a man, you are the submissive and you take your guidance from her. Your role is to love, obey, and serve her. Men who do not fully understand this dynamic may be hesitant to be submissive, even though it's what they really desire. They may think that submission means succumbing to abuse from women. This could not be further from the truth. Couples in a female led relationship have reported more happiness and a deeper connection with more sexual intimacy than they ever thought possible. They're happier, they're more fulfilled in a relationship that is based on domination submission. In submitting to a powerful female, your life purpose is to serve her and make her the best queen she can be. In domination submission, there can be strict rules that you and your queen can follow, but they need not be extreme. It's important that rules are respected and followed. What we don't realize is that domination submission are natural. In almost every relationship, 
there is one partner who's more submissive and one who is more dominant. Couples who identify as being into domination submission or having a DS relationship tend to include power play in their sex life. They will often explore aspects of BDSM and different types of play, which is what makes sense in these relationships and which what makes them so exciting. In female-led relationships, there's several types of submissive men. And these are, one, supportive gentlemen. A supportive gentleman is a man who behaves in a gentle and chivalrous way with women. Supportive gentlemen are often alpha men in society, and they possess the qualities of traditional men, but their conduct conforms to a high standard of correct behavior, respect, obedience, and service to his queen. He's considered a submissive alpha. Think of the supportive gentleman as being like a knight in the queendom. You're a man in service to your majesty. You worship, love, and obey and serve your queen. You may dominate in society, but when it comes to your queen, you are submissive. Supportive gentlemen often live in monogamous relationships with their queens, providing all of the services they desire. The supportive gentleman is the lightest version of submission. So your queen assumes all the power and leadership of the household and at work, but you take your direction from her, and in this regard, you are the submissive in bed as well. Now the next type is submissive man. A submissive or sub is a man who is still masculine, but is free to explore his more emotional and softer side. He's generally more agreeable, more adept at handling all sorts of tasks, including work, household duties, and childcare, while having great empathy, communication, and listening skills. The submissive man or sub has made a choice to willingly give up some or all of their male power and control and surrender to the dominant queen. Now, if you are submissive, you choose to allow your queen to take control of you. This is the next level of submission, a more intense version than the supportive gentleman. The submissive man can be submissive at work and outside the home. I always was very delighted when a man would show that he was submissive and treated me with respect in places like my work or at the gym or events. There's a power in submission, and submissive men who show respect to women are in demand. As a submissive, you've accepted your desire to surrender control to a superior female. You will generally be submissive at all times when you're with your queen at home and outside. Submissive men can have a dual role in bed where they are the queen's primary partner servicing her and ensuring she's sexually fulfilled, but they may also want to explore consensual non-monogamy with cuckolding and hot wifing where there's a third outside partner involved. Now the next type is a sissy. A sissy is a man who idolizes a woman so much that he desires to be feminized. He wants to abandon all of his masculinity and become as feminine as he possibly can become. He likes to wear female lingerie, dress in female clothing, wear makeup, and behave in a totally feminine way. Beyond the sub, he's made the choice to willingly give up all of his masculine qualities and surrender completely to his dominant queen. Now, sissy training is a process where the submissive man will learn to take on traditionally female roles. The submissive, known as as Sissy, learns to adopt ultra-feminine behaviors and perform feminine activities under the guidance of his dominant queen. Sissy training is usually performed as part of a BDSM role-playing scene or BDSM lifestyle. Sissification or sissy training is a process whereby the submissive man emasculates himself and takes on personality traits or roles usually associated with women. He effectively becomes a caricature of what a woman is based on societal stereotypes. This can include anything from wearing a dress to tights to wearing lots of pink or only responding to feminine names. What takes place during sissy play depends entirely on the submissive partner's chosen sissy role. And the last type is a slave. Now, when a man is a slave, he is a submissive who gives up his power to his dominant queen or master. A slave becomes viewed as the queen's property. He's willingly abdicated his freedom, which is different from the traditional use of slave. As a slave, a man still gives his consent to be completely controlled by the queen. She dictates every aspect of his life with very little input from him. Slaves are responsible for meeting all of their queen's needs and wants. They'll attend to their sexual needs, prepare their meals, keep the houses clean, provide emotional support and company. Queens may make their slaves entertain their friends or serve others during events or parties. Slaves may be walked around on collars or a leash. This role is generally reserved for more intense versions of femdom. 
So there's so much to learn about being submissive and creating the perfect female-led relationship or female-led marriage for you and your queen. My books, Submissive, Love and Obey, Real Men Worship Women, and my newest book, Female-Led Relationship, are the perfect resource to help you to learn everything you need to know about dominance and submission, female-led life, and the female-led relationship. Go to my website to learn more, www.loveandobey.com. So how can you learn more about submissive men and female-led relationships? All 14 of my books are available on Amazon. You can simply go to Amazon and search Marissa Rudder, or you can go to my website at www.loveandobey.com to learn more about the Love and Obey and female-led movement. And get links to all of my books and social media platforms, which include YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and Facebook. Female-led relationships are changing the world, one couple at a time. Join the hundreds of thousands of couples now living happily in the female-led lifestyle. Yeah, yeah.